she's 70 and she's just 31. Our exclusive with the newlyweds who now desperately want a baby. What I have with Max is real. We know it's real. Our friends know it's real. So who cares what everybody else thinks? Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. That story soon. First, Hillsong takes on A Current Affair. The church's leader, Brian Houston, is furious with us. So what's got him so upset? Ben McCormack explains. Out in the forecourt court right now is an Australian program called A Current Affair. He was very angry with me, extremely angry with me. His face showed great anger. They are a malicious program. They have a constant agenda against Hillsong. It's a, a very common technique of his to just, I guess, cast really negative aspersions on people and not have any evidence to back it up with. I think it has to damage Brian Houston uh, on some level because he's done the wrong thing. He's confrontational. He stormed over and I could see the anger on his face. So I stood up because I thought he was going to hit me. He's a coward. He doesn't have to answer any questions because the law currently is on his side. He's Brian Houston, the cult-like leader of Hillsong, who loves his flock and knows how to make money from them. It's about sowing so that we can reap, so that we can sow, that we can reap. This is not a church. This is an entertainment corporation. The product is God. You believe or you get out. Tonight, we'll show you his latest bizarre outburst against the current affair. Well, I think it's highly embarrassing. You're some lies all the time. They're more concerned about their reputation, their power and their money. To extend your reach, and if there's one thing this egomaniac can't stand, it's any form of criticism. It's about me, it's about me, it's about mine, it's about my one, it's just about me, it's about me, it's about me, it's all about me, it's about me, it's my dream. Brian Houston can't co cop criticism. The way the cult of Hillsong operates, there is no room for criticism. There is no room for debate. There's, it's a one-way conversation. There's no room for you know, any dialogue or any, any debate at all. I guess journalists have a responsibility to, to keep pointing out what's going on here because uh, it's not right. It was an awful truth the cover-up of child sexual abuse that went right to the top of the Hillsong Church. That will destroy somebody else the offender, Frank else Houston, an and the man found to have failed to report it to the police, his son and Hillsong founder and frontman, Brian Houston. He should have, if, if indeed he was acting in the interest of the victim, he should have reported his father's abuse to the police. There's no two ways about that. What Brian Houston and the Hillsong hierarchy did instead was sweep it under the carpet. The commission heard that Houston quietly retired his sex offender father and put him on a lifelong pension paid for by the church. I don't believe the church did protect him at all from not going to jail. I feel like the church um, kept the doors open for any victim, anyone at all, who decided they wanted to go to the police, to, that they could go to the police. The fact is, Brian Houston never contacted the police about his father's criminal conduct. Investigative reporter and 6PR drive presenter Adam Shand has been investigating Hillsong for years. He clearly knew that a crime had been committed. His father admitted that he'd done this. Uh, there was uh, deliberations about what to do, there was a decision taken not to go to the police and deal with the matter internally and then even more remarkably to offer the victim uh, a $10,000 inducement to keep quiet. Houston was also making headlines last week with a controversial feature story in Fairfax Media's Good Weekend magazine. In it, Houston claims his father molested boys because he was a frustrated homosexual. I'm no psychiatrist, but I think whatever frustrations he had, he took it out on children. Former member Tanya Levin, who's written a book about her experiences in the church, says Houston's comments are outrageous. Hillsong have in recent years targeted the gay community, and now the accusation that um, 
that you know some some people who commit offences against children are just frustrated sexually or frustrated homosexuals is so abhorrent, is so repulsive, is so vilifying that anybody who knows anybody in the LGBT community needs to keep them the hell away from Hillsong. In the same article, Brian Houston also attacks a current affair when questioned about our series of reports we've aired about his church and how it's run. ACA just lies, full stop. You can quote me, they are just liars. Interestingly in the article, Brian Houston never once gives one specific example of how our program has told a lie about Hillsong in all the stories that we've done. Was it when we revealed the tax-free millions that you make from your followers every week or the wads of cash that you collect on the international speakers circuit? Perhaps it was when we showed your personal financial arrangements, which means that you and Bobby, your wife, pay as little tax as possible. Or was it the story where we showed that hard-working Bible study students are forced to volunteer at Hillsong conferences for nothing? It's that same victim mentality that all kind of cult leaders and crazy dictators have that you know people are, are just lying about me he doesn't ever uh, produce any evidence about what these lies are he doesn't refute the evidence that's presented to him he just says lies 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 doesn't surprise me at all but i say brian houston if you've got a problem with anything that's reported about you go to the courts make a specific allegation i think everyone's realizing this is your modus operandi of the way that you avoid scrutiny Sometimes it's the, not the man's riches that are a problem, it's the man's pursuits. So if Brian thinks if we're we lies, let's take a look at some facts. Time and time again, Hillsong screams hysterically that a current affair never approaches them for an interview or responses to our stories. The program made no attempt to contact us to, to get the facts or even hear our perspective before airing this piece of fiction. That's a lie. Here are emails we've sent to Hillsong Media asking for interviews prior to a recent story going to air. Then there's all those questions about finances. How are they making so much money and where is it all being spent? After all, Brian and his glamorous wife Bobby live luxury rock star lifestyles. And just be in there with the spirit of faith. In 2010, Brian Houston told his followers in a letter when I travel overseas to churches, I do not receive any money personally. That's right, none. But that's not the whole truth. The fact is, when Houston speaks overseas, he receives buckets of cash called love offerings. Now, people often give love offerings, but every offering and honorarium that is given goes to LMI, and therefore towards the initiatives and work of the ministry. What you doesn't tell his followers is that LMI or Leadership Ministries Incorporated is effectively a tax-free expense account for himself and his wife Bobby. So whatever money he puts in there, he doesn't have to pay tax on it. This is legalised money laundering. Let's call it what it is. The law allows this. It's not just money. The Houstons have also sold their properties to LMI, which, you guessed it, doesn't have to pay tax on them. I mean, the home, for instance, he sells the home into Leadership Ministries and still continues to live in it. I mean, that's not a sale. That's, a, that's called a ring of rosy in, in tax terms. I pray with you that God will give you a nice home. I Hillsong constantly says people don't you. have to donate, but just to listen to the sell at every you. service. Sometimes we're so tight-fisted, holding a $5 note, that the Queen's got a tear in her eye. <laughs> Hillsong tells its members that their finances are open and transparent and available for inspection. That's also not true, according to many members, like Steve West. When he asked to see the books, he says he was sent a letter from Hillsong lawyers demanding that he cease and desist. It's high time the Australian Tax Office and the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission really had a good look at Hillsong and possibly even politicians uh, have a look at reforming the, uh, the way this is all run from a legal perspective to make sure that they're paying their fair share of tax because currently right now they are not paying their fair share of tax and it's time that, uh, that, that they did. Sorry, the they literally tell me where the boundary lines are. Earlier this year, Tanya Levin was arrested for trespass for being in the vicinity of the annual Hillsong Conference with the current affair. At the time, Brian Houston claimed the church had nothing to do with the police action. 
We are advised that her behaviour outside the venue resulted in her being apprehended by police at the request of the arena's security staff, not Hillsong staff. That's another lie. As it turns out, Tanya was arrested by police who were being paid for by Hillsong that day. And they arrested Tanya after being told by Hillsong staff that she was outside the venue. It's really clear that Hillsong don't like me and, it's, and, and they don't like anything to do with me. Let's have a confession. That a Brian Houston is the latest in a long line of super wealthy evangelical preachers who milk millions from their followers. The grace working. There's Crefello Dollar, who recently told his congregation that God wants him to have a $65 million private jet. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. And Kong Hee, man of God and friend of Brian Houston, who was this week jailed for eight years after stealing $36 million of his followers' money to fund his wife's singing career. This is Brian wishing him all the best. We are behind you in faith and behind you in love and spirit. God bless you. And don't be fooled by Brian's nice guy image. Brian got in my face and said, I'm not a pedophile. And I said to him, I didn't say you were a pedophile. I said, you give the victims of your fathers a lousy $10,000. Emma Finesse is a victim's advocate. She was at the Royal Commission the day Brian Houston gave evidence and saw the other side of this so-called man who preaches peace. Pursue peace with all people. I was fearful, but I thought if he's going to hit me, which I thought he was, um, I would take the blow. In the end, security had to pull Houston away from Emma. What I saw of the real Brian Houston, he's an intimidating, uh, controlling man. Hillsong's bully boy tactics don't stop there. After the Reverend Bill Cruz, who feeds the poor and the homeless, appeared in one of our stories, the Hillsong hierarchy called to abuse him. They also tried to launch a campaign against Senator Nick Xenophon, who also appeared on our programs, calling for Hillsong to show more transparency with its finances. This is a corporation. It should be taxed like a corporation. We should end this charade. It's really confirmed the way that they operate, the paranoia, the fear of outsiders, and the way in which they're willing to punish anybody who raises a voice about them. We approached Brian Houston for an interview, but unfortunately he was overseas. Hillsong did provide a current affair with a statement which you will find on our website. Max and Sam are like most newlyweds, completely beside.